Okay, we're going to get started. Good evening and welcome to the Paul Bayard Memorial Lecture. My name is Jorge Otero Pailos, and I'm professor and director of historic preservation here at the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. Uh, the Paul Bayard Memorial Lecture celebrates Professor Bayard's lifelong work to illuminate the importance of good contemporary architectural design in the preservation of historic buildings. Professor Bayard was director of the Historic Preservation Program here at Columbia from 2000 until his death in 2008. Every year we invite a distinguished architect who has advanced our collective understanding of this relationship. And this year we are honored to welcome Antonio Cruz of Cruz y Ortiz Arquitectos in, from Seville in Spain. Um, I think it's also a moment when we have to make this choice where we, we always ask ourselves, what would Paul think of this architect? Would he agree? <laughs> And um, I think this year in particular, um, he would have been very, very pleased. Um, Professor Bayard wrote The Architecture of Additions, um, Design and Regulation in 1998. This is a book that I think everyone has read in this room. And if not, then you should hurry on and, and go read it. Um, it was a book that really marked a moment in uh, the thinking about architecture and preservation. And in the book, he advanced the idea of the combined architectural work. This idea that two moments in time can collaborate and make something unique and different than at any one time could have existed. Part of, you know, something that would be part historic building and part contemporary architecture. A combined work was, was very special for Professor Bayard because if done right, he argued, it was a dialogue between architects of different time periods, and it was a dialogue that was rendered architectural. It was a dialogue that if you could understand the language in which it was spoken, you could actually see these architects thinking out loud about fundamental issues. And one of the fundamental issues that concerned Paul Bayard the most was how buildings sustained the public interest. And so this notion of the public interest that runs as a sub-theme in the, the book, The Architecture of Additions, really um, developed into something much larger. And he decided to develop it into a full book, which was to be called or titled, Why Save This Building? The Public Interest in Architectural Meaning. Now, he spent a Guggenheim Fellowship in Holland while doing research for this book. And it was really... Uh, uh, a great moment in his life, I think, when he, he went off to Holland to do this work. And I remember an email that he wrote to me about the architecture there and how wonderful it was to ride his bicycle to work uh, and to sit there and write his manuscript you know, during the day. And on his way on his bicycle to see all of this amazing architecture just while on two wheels. And the downside, he said with a typical good humor, was that so much good architecture was also terribly distracting and that he'd had this terrible accident that had left him with a, fra with a fractured clavicle and only one hand to type with, which was going to slow down the typing of the manuscript significantly. And it, it just struck me that he would have loved Cruz Ortiz's uh, renovation of the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam for its masterful design, but also perhaps um, because it famously involved a dispute between bicyclists and architects, which is the subject of a five-hour documentary, which I invite you all to, to download and to, and to watch. Um, he, I think, would have been amused by this, and he would have loved the idea that the public, um, however it comes, whether it comes in the form of a cycling group or in the form of a Landmarks Preservation Commission is interested in architecture and helps to articulate a new kind of architecture. Um, I think had Paul had the chance to finish his book before he passed away, he would have surely included the Rijksmuseum as an example. Um, Antonio Cruz and Antonio Ortiz um, are architects that met in school in Madrid when they were studying 
uh, with Moneo in the late 1960s between returning to Seville to start their practice. Their, um, their work has earned them uh, over 30 national and international competitions. They've been widely published in journals and monographs and exhibitions um, that have been held in Europe and internationally. And so it, it is amazing to see them sustain this level of architecture over decades, uh, one af after the other. And I remember meeting them uh, 27 years ago when I was a student uh, of architecture at Cornell University and they were visiting professors there. And, um, you know, architecture school, as you all know, is late nights. And uh, I remember their office in Sibley Hall always had a little light on. And uh, we always thought, we thought that they'd left it on and went home. But we soon found out that, no, they were always there, that Antonio was actually there at night burning the midnight oil, uh, sending faxes off to his office in Seville to try to get all these amazing buildings. And in particular, he was working on the um, on these high-speed train um, station in Seville at the time. And so we would drop into his office and, and he was there with his, with his drafting board. Uh, this was 91, you were in 91. Um, and um, and what, what, what was amazing to all the students there is the generosity that they would um, take the time from their busy work, they were clearly trying to send a fax <laughs> But they would sit there and we would have these wonderful hour-long conversations about architecture and about the smallest details and the grandest theoretical speculations. And I think that's the uniqueness of their work, that not only have they been able to carry out this, these amazing projects, but they've done so with great generosity to the discipline um, and, to, uh, and to the students that, like myself, had had the good fortune to run uh, across their path uh, along the way. More recently, Cruz Ortiz Arquitectos um, has been selected to represent Spain at the Venice Architecture Biennial, and in May 2014, they were awarded the distinction of Knight of the Royal Order of the Dutch Lion. Uh, they recently received the 2014 Honor Award for the American Institute of Architects and the Spanish International Architecture Award. And the list goes on. Um, tonight, He's going, Antonio's going to be talking about three projects that particularly uh, represent their attitude and their perspective on the way that one intervenes on historic buildings. And without giving too much away, one of those projects is their own building. So that is the challenge of all challenges, to have to go back to your own work. And so without further ado, please join me in welcoming Antonio Cruz. Thank you very much, Jorge. Thank you for the invitation to be here and to talk about intervention in, 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 in buildings. And uh, Jorge invited me to, 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 to explain the project of the Rec Museum, and I wanted to explain to, to other projects to make a little bit more complete in this intervention. And I, I would like to begin with this small introduction and make, doing a, a reflection or having a look to this, to this building. Uh, this building is clear that it's a mosque uh, for all the Spanish, but for more European people, it's very clear that it's the Cordoba Mosque. This is qu quite very well known. It's, it's not difficult to recognize. But if I show you this picture, this is not so easy. This is more difficult to recognize because it's a Baroque uh, cathedral, but maybe no, but no one of you knows where is the building. The surprising thing is that this building is just in the middle of the mosque. It is here. This is the intervention that the Christian made once that they took Cordoba, okay, they, they began doing another, they began here with a small 
chair, but at the end they make this very big intervention in the middle of the, of the building. And this is the, the, the chair of the cathedral over the roof of, the, of, this, of, this, of this mosque. All this is very well explained in this uh, book for Rafael Moneo, La Vida de los Edificios, the, the Life of the Buildings, in which he relates in, uh, with a lot of detail all the things that happen in this, in this mosque along the time. And I would like the introduction of, the, of this book that I am sure that I think this, this is already translated into English, but I am going to quote only one word in Spanish and then I will do some translation, like a translation. And Rafael said, Cada vez veo con más claridad que los edificios se desplazan en el tiempo, que no tienen la permanencia, la inmovilidad que para ellos a veces deseamos. Sobre los edificios gravita el, el tiempo, se mueven con él de manera inevitable, no son estrictamente lo que fueron y estamos obligados a aceptarlo. In English, there will be something like this. Every time I see more clearly that buildings move with the time, that they don't, do not have the permanence, the immobility that sometimes we want for them. Buildings gravitate sometimes, move with it inevitably, and we are forced to accept that they are not strictly that and they were. I think, I think that this is very clear, and I think that this is, let me say, this is the, 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 the in resume, about what I am going to talk today, about how building chain along the time and how we need that the building chain. And this is the three buildings that I am going to explain. The Basel, Basilea Station in Switzerland, the Rijksmuseum in Netherlands, and one building, the stadium in Madrid. And we will begin with the, the, the Basilea uh, station. This is Basilea, it's a big city, one of the biggest cities in, in Switzerland. And it's a, a city divided in two parts by the, by the tracks. This is the, the south, and most of the cities in the, in the north. And in this situation, the, 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 there is the, the station, this is the Swiss uh, train station, and there is also in this part there is the French train station because Basilea is in the border in between uh, Switzerland, uh, Germany, and France. And the station that was finished around the year, I think it's, it's 907. This is the building in the, in the time when we would finish. You can see how it's a very French building with these two tower with the with the clock in this in this position and this two door arch that you can think that after this two door arch is it's going to be the main hall for for the train, but this is not like this. What you are going to find after the arch really is the hall for the tickets. That what you find in that in that position. This is something that maybe it's surprising, but it's a very beautiful room that is, was, uh, it is still there, and that is going to be one of the main problems to resolve in the, in the remodelation of the building. The problem was that after the, this hall, this entrance hall with the ticket, they have different tunnel. This was the first tunnel that passed under the tracks to arrive to the different, different platform, and then they made another tunnel going to the south because the, the, the train station was large, it was more tracks, and they need another, another tunnel. And that's made that the, the functioning of the, of the train station was very, very poor. And this is, and they, 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 they proposed to make a competition to make a passerelle over the tracks and that the people could, could arrive on the, on the upper part of, the, of this passerelle and going down to the different tracks. And that's what the point where the new passerelle have, uh, have to arrive. 
And you see, there, there were a lot of compromise because we need to, this, this was a, a building that was a, a monument, and we, we had to deal with the fact that we need to make modification, we need to make a new passerelle in the, over, over, this, over all the tracks and arriving to this point. For sure, you had to, to change something, but the problem was to make in the more accurate way. And this is the, 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 the first idea in which we, were, we began to work, because uh, you can understand can, that deep passers have many different problems. It depends on the different situation in which we are. In, in some point, we need to be high enough to go over the existing cantilever, the sea, and that we could superpose the new uh, roof of the passerelle in such a way that we had to make the, a small modification in the existing buildings. In another point, we need to go down, for instance here, to make the links with the existing point. But at the same time, there is a lot of different situations that was quite difficult to solve with a, with a simple form. That's why we began working with doing a, a very simple plan, solving the problem of the different escalator and the elevator that had to arrive to the different platform. We, we proposed a quite uh, regular, uh, or well-organized passerelle that's come from here uh, to there, but the problem was how we can connect with, with the existing building. And in this here, we see how we propose a roof that goes over the uh, different elements. And for instance, in this part, we had to be higher because we, we wanted to, done to, to be at the same level of the existing cantilever and that we could be over it don't, to, don't touch the, without touching this element. But then we had to go down in this point to arrive to make the connection. And all that, we, and at, the, at the same time, we need to be quite high in the middle to have a, a feeling of uh, a big building. But in this shop, in this commercial space, we need to, to look for a lower a uh, level of, of the, of the, of the uh, building. And with this, we began to play, or we began to try to look for a, a geometric, uh, a free geometric uh, form that allowed us to make all together, or to, that we could uh, get everything that we need in the different points. And now, here, this is the existing building, and this is the new passerelle with all this shape that you can think that this is a free shape, but I don't think it's free. I think it has its own laws that are a little bit more difficult to understand. But this is not a free, a free shape. This is something that is a more complex shape. You see how, for instance, in this point, we can make the, uh, our building higher than that, and we can hang all the facade for this bin without touching. There is a gap, a gap in between this uh, old building and the new building. And it's a gap and it's a free, a free space. All these elements were in this idea. But at the same time, we get a very recognizable uh, shape, a very recognizable profile get, that gives the idea of a new building that gives the idea that the building, the station, have changed. This, in, in the profile of Basel, of Basel, there is now this profile that uh, explains that the station has uh, suffered a change and the, there is a new station, even that we have done modify almost as minimum the existing building. And the only point that we are going to modify is in the relationship in between this passerelle and this uh, hall uh, of entrance to the building. Because I don't know if 
okay? This is the situation of the, this is a model with all the shape of the, of the roof, and this is the roof. When we arrive to the south part, in this part we make an elevation, trying to get a, a new facade to the south of the city, because all the main city is here in the north, but in the 16th station, they, uh, they have not any facade to the south. And we created this, we make something higher here, trying to get the, the, sense, the, the, the feeling of a facade that make more visible the station in the south part. This is the station, the new passenger, and the, the profile of the building, and the, the building is a metal uh, building with pillar in, in, in steel and a roof of, of aluminum. But the problem that this was difficult to solve was also how make the relation thing in between this new passerelle and the existing hall. Most, most of the entries that they have, we have in the, in the competition, they propose don't to make any change in this hall and to make the uh, elevation of the people to the passerelle just in this wide platform that we can have here. But our purpose was to maintain the importance of the uh, existing hall, like the, ent like the entrance to the new passerelle. We understood that if really we wanted to maintain this, the importance of the hall, it was very important that it was really the point in which you can enter to the new passerelle and you can have the, you can, you can uh, have the escalator that allow the people to go to this level, to the upper level here. And we propose this modification that now you are going to see that you can understand that this has been very difficult to uh, the conversation with the people of the Deckman Flege, that is the, 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 the people who had to take care of the monument in Switzerland, because we wanted to convince them that we need to make here a big hall in this point, with all these arches, in such a way that the passer could arrive directly to the, to the hall. They understand the importance of this idea. They understand that was part of the project, and that in, in this view, you can see how the demolition of all these uh, arches was done. And now, the integration of the new escalator we maintain just till this point the, uh, the hole at this was, in this point, but all this part, we maintain the two, one arch, uh, another arch here, but the six small arches was changed for this uh, uh, new intervention that I think this is the, the most important or the most difficult part in, in our project is to get the, the permission and to get the uh, the, the opportunity to modify this uh, Schartel, I can't remember the name in, 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 in German, that the, 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 the hall for the ticket, it is the new entrance to the, to the new passerelle. This is the, the day of the opening of the, of the, of the, of the passerelle with every people getting for that building to the to the other. I think this, is, this was the, the main, uh, the, the, the important point in, in, in this project. And this is the, the interior. In the interior, we, we make a, a roof that was very visible with this wood uh, in the roof that gives you the unity all along the 200 meters of the, of the passerelle. And we leave that all the changes that you need to have in a commercial space appear from this line till the bottom. And here, everything could happen, but here in the upper part is the, is the, is the space where we wanted to maintain the unity of the, of the building. In here, once again, this difficult point in which 
the all uh, uh, the all elements uh, are here, and our new roof and our new facade is here without touching this this point. This was the and here so we see the same point looking for the from the outside. And now I, I am going to explain a little bit about the, the construction on how we can construct this build the, this passerelle because the we had to do at the same time that the whole station was was working and the train in this is uh, in this city is very important every every day the in a city of Five thousand, five hundred, five hundred thousand inhabitants. I think that every every day, approximately half of these two 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 hundred thousand uh, pass by this by this station. And we make the we make uh, this is the the situation. And in this point, is going to be built like an, a factory in which we we were able to. Fabric the slab of concrete is a one meter high, three, three feet high, is a slab of concrete that was fabric here, and they is was passing over the element that we had to build at the at the same time, allowing that the train were were working all along the time of the construction. One that we have done this slab of concrete. Ops, uh, over this slab, we can make this more lighter uh, building, all in, in steel and uh, aluminium, and we can repeat this profile that we are looking for all the time to get to get this facade. And uh, I have mentioned before this more important facade, looking to the south of the of the of the station and giving. An important facade in this part of the of the of the, uh, of the city. And for from Basel, we are going to to Madrid and to to explain the the in two parts the the building that we have done there. That was in the maybe the, these faxes that Oscar mentioned in 91, where we were doing the the competition. For uh, to make this stadium, that initially the competition for, was to organize all this big space for different sport facilities, and but uh, from all this competition that uh, we won, at the end the only thing that we built was this stadium for 20,000 spectators, and the stadium had only one bleacher, only in one part. This is, there is different reason why you can build one stadium with only one bleacher in the, uh, in the west part. And you, that can be explained maybe because athletics is not the same sport than football and in, in or soccer, how do, how do you say here? Because in soccer, all the pitch is very homogeneous, but in athletics, most of the thing happening in the in the in the final and uh, in, in the arrival, or maybe because it was important for a city like Madrid that we are we are going to do the track and field stadium to get something that have some importance. Maybe because this part of the city need, need an iconic element, we decide to do. When this building with only one bleacher. Uh, for this small drawing, we began to build first the, the model, maintaining the idea of that you have seen in, in, the, in the building. That's it, this wall here, different curved wall. In, over this curved wall, this element that is the only one bleacher that had been called in Madrid the, the peineta. It's a special piece of the traditional uh, world of the, of the women that was very recognizable. And this is like something, is an element that lying over this wall of concrete. But I like also to, to show this the picture of the building when it, is, it was still under construction. Because 
you can see that the building is not, neither the, the, the concrete is finished. You can see that here there is a still something to do. But it's very, it's, in, it's, very, it's very important that the building is already finished. You can, in this concrete structure, the idea of the building is complete. All that you are going to see later is not important. What is important is this construction in which all the shape of the building, everything is, is already done. Even I will say that I like, I, I like less this image in which there is all this small thing, it is the, the railing, there is the light. Okay, I, I prefer this, this situation previous in which the building spread themselves only by, by, by the concrete. And that's, that was the building that we, we finished in the year 1995, and that recently, or not so recently, 10 years ago, we received the, the commission to make a, a, a enlargement of the, of the building, and uh, we received initially the, the commission that to, to enlarge a building for athletics that then we can transform in, in soccer stadium, and finally, the commission worked directly to make a soccer stadium. And uh, in this, you see once again, this view without railing, without nothing, only the, the concrete poor, and all the expression of, the, of, the, of this building is complete in this, in this image. And this, Im this building that also couldn't be understood like a two-facade building, like a Hano one, building that you don't know if the rear facade is the interior or is the exterior. And even in the interior, this sensation on unique material is very present in all the uh, spaces that we have in this uh, interior. And now we had to make the enlargement of this building and we wanted to we wanted to maintain this iconic building or this iconic impression that was already very important for the city of Madrid, but uh, we have to, to make a transformation and we need to make something that complete the, the 16th building. And that's what the, the first idea that we did in 2004, I think, that we, we began working in this, in this enlargement of, of this building. And we wanted, uh, as I have said, try to maintain this, exactly this image that had been the, the more fixed image for people, and, but we need to, in any case, to make modifications. And uh, this modification is implied that, uh, that we are going to change all these elements we had to build one bleacher and a second bleacher over, over the previous uh, bleacher. We had to, to complete with the same system of, of constructions. And we uh, propose to make a, a roof, a roof that is a, a cable and canvas uh, uh, structure. Today I'm not going to explain uh, the, the construction or the uh, structural concept of, the, of this roof that is quite interesting. I am going to only to leave you to think about what had been the main problems that we had tried to solve with this enlargement that I have already mentioned that we wanted to maintain the image of the, of the, of the building. <coughs> but at the same time, we would like that the new building doesn't appear like to be a Frankenstein made by two different parts or for, for different intervention, but that you can understand the whole building like only one uh, architectonical idea. I let you see a, a little bit uh, of soccer because everybody had to, <coughs> to have a, a little rest. Spain won, of course. And, uh, but, okay, this is the, the complexity, the, 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 this type of uh, sport 
facilities are really, really very complicated program with so many different people here. You see the new roof, but at the same time, you see how the initial building, once again, like also in, in, Basel, in Basel, we don't touch the initial building, even that this was our own, own works, but then we had to begin. This is, this is a, a, the final project in which is, is different. We, we make a, a, a roof that is not, is a little bit different than, of the initial. And we have to make, this is an explanation about the different elements of how the building had been uh, built with all the excavation and uh, the different program because really it's, it's very, very complex for the different families of users that one building like this has. If we had to deal with the uh, general public, we had to deal with the VIP, with the VVIP, with the referees and with the athletes, the, with the press. Uh, okay, there is plenty of different users that in, normally had to be in different position, and in some point they had to to meet one with with other, and that makes really very very complex all this all this program. And I, I had to say because I think that most of you, of you know already how the Spanish architects we work that we are very generalistic. We we work in all the all the part of the architecture, we take care of the functioning, we take care also about the, even about the, the, the construction of the building, about the, how the, 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 the roof works, even that at the end we have also engineers that work for us and that they made the last calculation, but the structural concepts is part of our, of our works. And here we had had a lot of uh, fun, I would say, because we, we to do this this roof is very something that is also very interesting. It's a, the roof itself is like an element that is resists itself. They don't they only tr or transmit to the concrete part that is all that that you are seeing now. They only transmit vertical loads. They all they don't transmit moments. Only in that way, we uh, represent us with this element that now arrives like a wheel, or like a well, and it is, it is really like this. You could take this element, you, you, have, you are very strong in that, and you can uh, in the, make independent of the, of, the total, of the total building. And this is the last element that arrived and made the, the unity in between all the all these elements. Okay, and um, now we are going to go ahead, we are going to pass Lydia. Okay, and this is the image of the, of the, of the building. And I am going to go a little bit quickly because enough, we are not going to have time to speak about the, about the Rijksmuseum. But the thing is interesting to see this, this image about the, the construction of this roof, how so many people working in a building like this, so many engineers, so many good professionals that have to collaborate in do, doing this complex construction with all these pieces that had to be fabric previously with but really complicated shapes, and that everything had to, at the end, be in the, her pla in the place, in the sad place. Every, every, all this, all that that you are seeing is the the work of a whole day to put to put this piece of this mm, circular bin in, in the top. Of the of the building, and then bit to bit to the moment in which we are able to with to put all this cable in here, I go a little bit quickly. 
astrosion. But at the end, this, this root with this stereo cantilever that goes there and there and there. But you see in this image, this is interesting for me to see how this is the previous building. It is there for the nostalgic. Then always say that the previous war was better. You, it's, you made bad, 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 worse now. Okay, you have the, those who like the initial building. It, it is there. So many people around these interesting buildings, interior complexity, victim, all that is measured to at the end at the building. Uh, only 22 players at the at the end uh, in the middle of the of the field. <laughs> And the snow arrived, and someday uh, give us a different vision that we had never thought in death. And now we, we are going to to Amsterdam and to talk about the about the Rijksmuseum. And the, the Rijksmuseum is is in Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a so beautiful city. It's one of the more beautiful cities in, in Europe. It's a, a city that have all these buildings, but have Mainly this canal that are so so impressive and is so wonderful. And in this city uh, that began in the year, this is a vision of Amsterdam in the two, in the south and the year thousand. It was a very small city, but it was a very powerful city that bit to bit began to grow in doing a doing a crown around the, the old city from the east to the to the west. That finally they, they complete all the uh, all the extension of the city, and that's what the city in the moment that the first building, the first Rijksmuseum was built in this position. You can see that the old city, the, the historical city, was already complete, but nothing had happened around the, outside this this old city. <coughs> and in this moment, that was a moment of growing of the, of the city, and at the same time was a, a moment in which the, the concept of to be in Netherlands, to be uh, a Netherlands was a very important moment from the point of view, view of the nationality. There was a, a museum that had been created in the year um, eight, 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 800 eight, or 801, uh, and but at the end, at the at the end of the 19th century, they went to make a, a new a new a new museum. At, at the, but at the same time, the the idea was that the this, the the city is going to grow to the south, and this was very important in the conception of this building for the very beginning, because this is the the rights as it is now, and this is all the own town. But this was the, the, the idea of the competition that Peter Kuyper did, and with that the, the drawing, he won the competition. And you see that the building, at the same time, is a, is a door to the, to the extension to the city to the south. You can see that this is like an arcade, and you can cross through the building. This is very important in the conception of this, of this building from the very beginning. This way to pass through the building is not only a passage, it's really a street of, London, of Amsterdam. Okay, this is the property of the city of Amsterdam, it's not the property of the museum. And this is very important in this uh, its history, in the history of the museum and in the history of our extension. And Kuiper planted the station of the city to the south with this Three, 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 with this trident, this uh, three rods, and even in that time, you can see that in the beginning, not only pedestrians, only horses, even tram are passing through through the building, and that's what the uh, the, the situation of the building when uh, we began to to work there. But we we began to to understand the world of, of Kuiper and to study 
what, how was done this building. And we, we discovered this drawing in which uh, there is a doubt because in, in the time of Kuiper. There is a, 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 a doubt, there is a possibility, a two possibility. Because for an architect like Kuiper that was uh, trained in the, in the academy in, uh, in France, it was very easy to suppose that he can make a building with two choreas, one choreas and then another choreas, uh, with an entrance, this is easy, but the stair had to be here in, in the scheme that they, they, they know how to do. And the problem of Skyper that he can't situate the stair in this position because this position, he, there is a street. And then he studied two possibilities. What I can do, said the Kuiper. I go to the courier, and from the courier, I enter in the building and I put the stair in this position, or I put the entrance here and I put the stair in that position, and I left the courier only like an interior of the building. Finally, Kuiper and the, and the people who managed it took this decision. They, they have a building with two doors, I think that we can see if we go a little bit in the rear, okay, we had the building with one door in here, another door there, and with two stairs in that position and another position. Okay, that was the, the, the decision that Kuiper made. This was one of the possibilities. That was the other possibility. And then they decide that this is the upper, the upper level with the same problem, and they decide to take that. And in, in Kuiper's time, the courier were part of the exhibition. You can see all the rest of different pieces of architecture that were in the courier, like part of the, of the, of the visit of the, of the building. But the, this building has had always this problem that the street cut the building in two, and there is no relationship in between east and west part of the building. And at the same time, the building it was not very well understood in the beginning. They find it that there was a lot of decoration in the building. Uh, Kuiper had understand the building like experience, like now is said. Okay, it's not only to see the pieces on Rembrandt or the Femia or the Fanjal. He understood that the whole building had to be one experience for the people. But you. I'm going to see how in, during the 20th century, this is not understood. During the 20th century, the curator and the director of the museo understand that a building for museum had to be a space in which you can contemplate the piece of art in the more independent way and without any that disturbing your uh, perception. And that way they began to eliminate decoration and to eliminate things one, <coughs> and that's what we find it when we arrived. Everything was painted white, no decoration remained there. The Protestant had won the fight against the Catholic <laughs> architect that made this building, because that's what another of the problem, that the Kuiper was a Catholic for the South, and the, the, the Protestant said, this is too much decorated. <laughs> okay, and this is what we found it, in, 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 in that beautiful uh, front hall that, and okay, this is, this is the place where the, the restorator, 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 restorator of the building world in the upper part, that I, I explained that because, and this is the aspect that had the cafe was in some part, um, but also in the, in, the, in the room of honor, the most important uh, space, where the, where the, here, it had been always the, the night was situated. You can see how from this uh, uh, image to that began to disappear things more, more, and we arrived to that situation. Okay, and this is important because really there had been a different way to understand what is a museum today. In the, in the beginning, in Kuiper's time, a museum was a space, was a building in which the same building had to tell us 
uh, something about the art. It's not only the problem to show the small pieces, wonderful, wonderful pieces from Vermeer, or the Van Hal, or Rembrandt, or whatever else. Is the building itself had to be part of the experience. During the 20th century, nothing of that. Only the piece. And now, today, we understand again that the building itself had to be part of the experience of the people who uh, visit a building. Now, we, we are more in the line of the people of the 19th century, not exactly with the same thinking, but we understand that we need also the experience. That's what they happened also in, in, during the 20th century with the couriers. All the courtyards were absolutely villa, full of different levels. They put, they put the air conditioning over there before to begin doing different levels to do, and they complete. When you enter in the Reich Museum before our intervention, you get immediately lost because there is nothing recognizable. The only thing that was maintained was the main stairs, and that's all. You never understand where the courtyard were. Uh, it was lo you were lost in the whole building. And even that the, the building appeared to be in good shape, maintained for the exterior, nothing had happened, but in the interior, it was really very damaged. And the, the idea of the competition that we made, not only we, but it was the idea of the claim also, it was to uh, recuperate this idea. The, the, the motto of the, of the, most, of the competition war in English because it was uh, forward with Kuiper. They say, go to the future, but let's go to take Kuiper and we bring Kuiper with us. And now we began with our, our, our proposal, our proposal for this situation. This is the, the cut in which all the lower level was cut for the, for the passage. Only in the upper level you have some pieces. And you also see the different level that we have. It was a little, this is higher than that, and this is higher than that. Our proposal was to build under the, under the, the passage, to make a connection, to connect the two courier with a new uh, floor going down, passing from one part to the other, and pay attention to this small sign that we have in this point because they are going to be important in the, in the finishing of the, of, the, of the project. We propose to do that, and in that idea in the middle to make a cut in the middle of the passage and that the people could go down through this, uh, in this, in this pas passage to create a stair, a stair, connect the two courier under, under the passage. That was the idea of the, of the project, and that was a little bit more the design already with, with here an auditorium, and here the cafe and the, the shop, because one of the problems of this remodelation of the museum is the new needs that a museum of the 21, or the 20, finish of the 20 and the 21 century, we have, we, we need a very big hall, we need a shop, we need, we need cafe, we need auditorium, plenty of things that one museum in the 19th century doesn't have. And this is the same problem that has been solved in the, in the Louvre by the pyramid of, of pay and in the British with the roof of Norma Foster or in the Prado in Madrid by, by Rafael Moneo. And uh, uh, Reichs was the last big museum in Europe that needed this, this transformation that we did. And the other, another thing that I would like to, to tell you is that we created a new axis of symmetry west as Kuiper has worked only with the north-south and we created a new axis because our purpose was to connect east but with west. And the purpose of Kuiper was to connect south with north. And we, we understood that we need to create this. Okay. And then this was the, the image of the, of the competition that, that, that we won. And that was uh, an idea of the, of the project. The first thing that we done is to demolish this wall that we are going to represent. And that's such a way because we, we are going to clean the, the couriers in such a way that the light coming into, into the interior of this, of this passage. The other, the other idea 
was this disenchantment. And now I can tell you that never we don't we have we had no been able to make this entrance in this in this way. And at the end, let's going to talk about this. And that was the, the, the first the first idea to go to go down in this way. And once that you can go down, you connect the, the two couriers. And I had already said that uh, this is not the final solution. And it's very curious that because I am convinced that they w we won the competition because of this idea. This, this was the strongest point in our idea, was the idea to make this gap, this gap in the middle of the, of the, of the passage and to enter to the courier through this uh, gap. And at the end, uh, for uh, bicycle reasons that I will explain later, we have been not been able to, to do that. And in any case, we are happy with the building. And this is only that it's important to, to tell you the history and that you know how things uh, had happened in, in this situation. And uh, okay, this, this was the, the initial idea to Korea, to clean Korea that not doesn't exist before. Now, okay, it, they, they sit in the very beginning and they, they were lost. And this is the point of connection in between the, the two couriers. This is the passage. And now we arrive to the, to the second courier in which in the lower part it is the, it, it is the shop. And now in this way we are going to uh, go to the, to the cafe in which we, we, see, we think we can see the connection in between the two couriers, the passage, and we see this element in the top that we know or we call the cantilever, the chandelier. The chandelier that is a special element with many different purposes. But to begin with, you can understand that this uh, ceiling creates a, a virtual ceiling that made that the height of the two couriers and the passage is the same. And we get in this way the union in between the three elements by the virtuality of this, uh, of this uh, virtual uh, ceiling that created the... I, okay, that's, that was all the problem that, that we had with the bicycle. And I am, in, in, in this, okay, I am going down to speak about one building that we have done in the time that we f were fighting with the cyclists. That was the restoration building, because I see that it's going to be too large, the, the conversation. And we are going only to see this wonderful image of the, of the restorator touching the fan hall and the, and we, there was a building that was near the, the Reichs and the main building in which we made, and we made another modification and we get a new building in which I had to say that to get the north lights was the main purpose of this building. That's why this inclined window and this roof because the north light is what the restorator wanted to do his work. But I, I go quickly with this building because it's not, it's going to be too. I, I like to show this picture because it's a picture of all the people working there that are really very happy. And they took the photograph and they sent to us like a, a, a gift to us saying, We are happy with your building. And they, all of them, they are there. Okay, uh, we go back and, okay, for different reasons, at the end, we try to make even. Another proposal, like to let the, the cyclists in the in the in a part to reduce. But the, 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 the curious of the situation is that at the end, at the end, the cyclists, what they want is to be in the middle. <laughs> what they want is is is, is, a, is a problem of a signal or signification. In the middle is the the king is in the middle and the Pope in the, in the middle, and they want to be in the middle because that who is in the middle is the one who had the power. It's not the problem to have a space because you can see that there, they had a lot of space. And even I say something, if they have to set this situation, they, are, they could stay in the right forever. 
But in the situation that we have done, in some day, in some year, they are going to be out. If they have set the situation, a situation that is expressed for the bicycle, they will be maintained forever. But now, I think that more than three or four years, they are going to be out because you cannot have bicycle passing in this, in this museum with, the, with problem of security and all the levels. And this is what we have to accept. And, uh, but, okay, any case, uh, there is, there is uh, problem in us and, it, and there is satisfaction in that, even that this uh, beautiful situation on the entra hand, we couldn't do, but uh, we uh, were able to, to, complete, to complete this building and to main all of the scene. Uh, the, the project that we have done is uh, more or less what you are now going to see now in, in this video, uh, going from the, from the south part. Uh, really, there is three or four things that uh, I, more that I would like to explain about the, the small intervention that we have done in, the, in this part of the, in the north part of the building, like this element for the entrance, or another element for the, for the uh, Ashan collection that we had done also in the north part of the, of the building, uh, like a special intervention, always all this intervention with the same stone that we had used in the pavement and, in, in, and all the arcades that we have in the, in the Korea, we took a special stone to significate the point in which we have uh, we had a work. Is the color is similar to the color of this basement of the building, but the quality of the, of the stone is, is quite different. But we have made these two uh, interventions. That's one that we had already passed. It is a, a space for the entrance of the logistic and now at the end of the, of the passage, we are going to see another a small building that we had done for the Ashan collection. Uh, the Reichs have only uh, Dutch art, but at the same time um, uh, have also a, a good uh, Ashan uh, collection of art. And they are happy because now, because instead to be mixture with all the rest of the building, we made for them a very special building in a, a small lake and we construct this this building different that stay in the in this point and is the the building for the for the Ashan the Ashan collection and okay what we could explain more that in the in the place where they were had built in the middle of the courtyard we uh, demolish this is the demolition that we, that we have done, this, all this demolition, and with all these elements. And this, at the end, we arrive to this situation, well, this building that is full of cicatrices? Scars. The scars, no? And some, somebody said to us, why don't you leave the scar visible? But we think that this is not... The, the way that we like to work, and we restore absolutely this space. This is the complication to do this building, because it's said that this is a really, in, in Amsterdam, when you dig only 50 centimeters, you have, uh, you have uh, water. And you say, well, in Amsterdam, say, if you want to make a, a underground, you need a sailor more than a constructor. And this is real. <laughs> in that complicated the build the concession. And this is when friend of us, uh, Jose Manuel Ballester, that is an artist, is a photograph painter artist that had made really wonderful, he, have, he followed normally our, our work, always we had uh, Jose Manuel always main doing work, uh, picture for, not for us, he makes his own picture and he take all this beautiful image and possibly we are going to make a, a special book about the Rijksmuseum. Also in the in the Peineta, in the in the stadium, he had made one of the other photographs that I have shown is, is from 
from the Jose, from Jose Manuel, and he always is thinking and finding interest in points where you doesn't see anything. He see, he's seeing an, one opportunity being in these empty spaces of the art, where the art was was stay. What happened now? when you take out the, 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 the painter and you retire the pin, the, everything, and this is the face. Okay, this is already one normal photo. photo. This is people arriving and looking at these couriers that um, only people that have more than 18 years, they, they say, okay, I remember for this courier that they sit before, and people was discovering what they have, and they, more they, 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 they doesn't know that the Reich had these beautiful courtyards in his interior, all these elements that... Here is the position of this cantilever is in, in, in this position where the building have no build, had no windows because windows are only in the lower part because upper part had cenital light. The light came from the top. And in the in, in that's why they have no is it is where they put the painter in the fair floor are the sculpture. That's why our construction, our this chandelier try to uh, situate it just in this space where the building have no uh, windows and the building is said is poor. Uh, and this is all all the element that we build with the same stone organizing everything. And this is the, the building already finishing. This is a building that we have been able to finish very well without we can finish all the details. We are very happy about, about this. And this is the building empty, but at the end and the light coming from the top, passing through this element, how this element I previously spent to, to, to Jorge, how this, uh, uh, this element had a lot of, of purpose, for instance, he is good for the um, for the for the sound of the space because it's an acoustic element. At the same time, we had artificial light in the in the in this element in here in here. This is good, but at the same time, this is the virtual ceiling. But at the same time, it's an element that you can feel how the light is coming from the top to the to the lower part of the of the courtyard this is the different purpose of this uh, this element and then when that the building is is finished at the end the, the only thing that we had could have all this all this element even the auditorium we can control and then the painter we began to recuperate all the beautiful painter this is how it is now Okay, just could be maybe a little bit. I, I wasn't able with 30 years to do that. I can't recognize, but now I am. We are able to accept that we have to recuperate. This is curious because, for instance, the company who made this uh, floor is the same that made the initial floor at the end of the 19th century. He has maintained and he were uh, song of song of song that the people of do have been doing that. All these have been recuperated, all these elements. And this is the gallery of honor waiting the arrival of the, uh, of the night wars and with this of the spiritual. Um, and here, once again, Jose Manuel Ballester take this photograph that are very, uh, I think it's very sensible to see in the interior of these bosses are uh, pieces of art of very a great value, no? And you feel that this element that all these are waiting the position, it began to, and then every element can, can now, and there is only the, the uh, nice word that arrived in the last moment with lots of ceremonies in a box in which uh, Phillips and Crumb and all everybody is there because they, they give the payment, they sponsorize the, the museum and this gap in the, in the, in the, 
in which the right the, the, is going to arrive to the place, everything is ready. And now, Puff and Beatrix, the, the king, the queen can finally finish his queen, uh, kingdom and let his son uh, will, will, uh, William, 10 days later of the opening of the museum, he wa she was waiting that we finish the work to, to be retired. And now only to, the, the people arrive to the museum and only to finish as a leader feeling about what is a museum today, which is the mixture of different art, how the people, the, the different uh, culture enter. And to finish, we see a mixture of USA music with in a Dutch uh, museum in a small film that is say how a museum received today the people uh, for all the manifestations. the younger, that is Leonard Bernstein, uh, is West Side History, is the dancing in the gymnasium. Thank you for a wonderful lecture. It was so enjoyable to, to hear your thoughts on these three amazing projects. I think that if um, you know, one had to um, imagine a better, um, a better set of examples to, to deal with the subject of, of uh, contemporary architecture and historic uh, buildings, 
uh, one would be hard pressed to find them. And I wanted to um, just launch our conversation here, um, thinking a little bit about this um, this question. Something aside, an aside that you made uh, when you showed us the end of the uh, of the uh, Rijksmuseum restoration. And if I understood correctly what you said, you said. Um, when we looked at the restored interiors with all the polychromy of Kuipers, um, he said, 30 years ago, I wouldn't have really accepted this. Mm -hmm. But now, I can. Yes. So, tell well, us a little uh, bit about uh, that. Okay. How, Every, what happened 30, in those 30 years? <laughs> Everybody have be, had to be conscious that all the people of our generation came for an education in which, I, I, I know the name in Spanish, but uh, in, not in English, uh, it was a, a book that said Ornamento y Delito. Ornament and Crime. Uh, Ornament and uh, Crime. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that was our... our, our when we were young, we were, uh, young that was the, our thinking. The ornaments is, was a crime. After that, we were quite young. We, we began to understand that ornament appear in the, pro, in the point where there, there are a problem of construction. That was our first appro approach. Uh, uh, approach uh, uh, okay, approach I am a little, or, approach, or discovery or, or, uh, or? Uh, approach to the to the ornament to discover that if you take a cup or glass and you find that the ornament are in the point with the bar is finding the base on in the part with the bar is finding the the, just the cup and you say okay the ornament is here because there is a a, 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 a problem of construction because I, the people want to hidden this problem. Yeah. And okay, that was the beginning to to get to put the ornament, let's say, in a rational situation. Mm -hmm. And bit to be, I think that in this moment, the ornaments is no more a, a crime, and for some people, it's even the, the way in which they are uh, working with a lot of ornaments. And if I can. Even I cannot say better these old ornaments that the or the new ornament. When I see buildings in which the ornament is hidden, even the incapacity of the architects, I am not so happy. <laughs> um, but I I am more sensible to these periods, and I can understand better the architect of the 19th century and the, the importance of the ornament in this in this moment. And when you see, if you go and you put the question to the visitor, what do you say that they are going to say about the, the to bring back the ornament? Right? They are happy, for sure. Uh, they are happy. Okay. It's interesting that you brought the question of crime uh, uh, to, to, the, to the discussion, because, you know, um, uh, there was a, I had this feeling, you know, that it, especially in the uh, Basel project, that there was a kind of a confession of a small crime committed when you demolish those those entrances over no, there. No, 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 no. So, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, no, no, no. The question, no, 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 okay. the question is that uh, to talk about the, in, the, the how clever the people of the monument have been there to understand that we need to make this demolition. What and was the uh, argument that you made? What, what, yeah, the what argument case is did you that make? The, if you really want to put in function the, uh, the Charte Halle, that is the name, Charte Halle, you cannot leave the Charte Halle like a reliquia, reliquia? A, a, a relic. A relic of the past. Right. Really, if you want that this uh, Charte Halle is again uh, functional and the people, he, it had to be the point mm in which you connect with the new passerelle. Mm. And because you need to connect with the new passerelle, you need to demolish this element. We have been working in many uh, existing buildings. Fortunately, always in buildings that are not really a monument, let's say, in big words, you know, not, not 
premium buildings right. because I think that we always prefer to build this building in which you can have some freedom and you can you can demolish some part because when you are really in a in a historical building of the higher level right. is um, impossible to do that they did it in the past in the in the in the cordoba mosque they did it and, right and they demolish and but you're very critical is, of that is, no 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 i am not critical ah. i like this this the building in the in the way that it is now i am not critical many people uh, always complain about this intervention and they think that it will be better to have this building in the initial shape but I, I think that the strongest of this of the building and that the comprehension of the needs of the different culture and the need the different economical situation along the along the history need to put this building in in, in use. If the Cordoba Moxe is had not been transformed in the in the Christian Cathedral, it had been demolished. That's sure. a very good point. And in fact, many, sure. of the, many of the mosques in Spain were demolished. There's one demolished. of the few remaining ones is that For one. And so you could, you, are you saying that that was an act of preservation then to, in, in, yes. in, to introduce that? Yes, yeah. because it's, a, it's, yes, it's an act of preservation because it had been possible to, to conserve the uh, Cordoba Mosque because it was useful for the city. Otherwise, maybe today is different, but in some in, in some cities, if, if you go to to the city where I live, uh, where I where I live in Sevilla, um, we had no, we cannot have so many uh, museums and so many space for culture and so many space for exhibition. We need to use the old convent in, to transform in other things because if not, it's going to be demolished, and the only way it is to uh, to be a little bit flexible with the transformation of these buildings. I, I think this this um, example that you brought of the Cordoba Mosque is really uh, important um, because, of course, when one tries to, and you brought brought us back, you know, to the moment of of the of the um, uh, of, of of the Inquisition, mm. right, and the moment where. Um, it was not okay to be a Muslim in Spain, right? No. And it was not okay to have um, mosques. So I understand how by turning it into a church, they were actually trying to preserve it. Uh, so that, that, that makes sense as, as an argument. And so when we fast forward to today, many of the projects that you showed us were projects where um, there was growth. The uh, Basel station was small and had to get very large in order to get many more people in. The Peineta had to quadruple its size, the, the stadium, in order to get more uh, people in. The uh, Rijksmuseum, the same thing. It, we, it's gone from one to two and a half million visitors since you did your work. So if we think of what's tolerable today, is it is it tolerable to have a small building that very few people visit that's very important? Does, it, does every historic, does, does the idea uh, today um, that we don't tolerate is, is a very important monument, the monument with a capital M that is not visitable by the mass public? No, I, did, I, did, I didn't I don't it's understand. It's a bit of a stretch, the, the, isn't the, it? The, the, the final of the, your... Every, every project. You, you said that all this building can uh, be transformed because uh, we need more people using them. And they're they're, they're yes, all yes. And what, increased. What is, what is the question, the opposite situation? I'm trying to get to the, con you know, by drawing the comparison, it's a little no. bit of a strong comparison over here. I'm trying to push the point slightly, you know, that there were some things that were not tolerable at certain times and that by making a certain kind of architecture, they were made tolerable. So the church and the mosque made the mosque tolerable, no, no, no. and therefore it was preserved. And so I'm drawing, drawing the, the, the comparison to your work in these museums. Yes, yes, that all that I understand, but uh, I didn't understand the final, the final idea. The these final are, idea these are, will be 
the there, there has to be two million people that visit this. Yes. And yes. so, in a way, that could destroy the building, couldn't yeah, it? Yes. I mean, the, the first thing that you, the first thing on the table is, we need a new building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need a new train station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need a new uh, Rex Museum. Yes. And so, in a way, would would do you think of your work as a way to save these buildings from, or or, 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 or you never it's, it's, felt the buildings were in any war. danger? It's not my work. It's the decision of the society. Mm. It's not because I am an architect, an architect. But even in the in the Rhein Museum, sometimes we had discussion that were interesting. For instance, when we try to isolate the building, how we can isolate this old building, and we had to make transformation to isolate the building. And the people... Is, I, 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 isolate or insulate? Insulate. Like, insulate. like from thermal... For thermal, say, okay. for thermal yeah. and, Therm for, and for it, water. It, right, for water, so insulate. Uh, yeah. For water. Right. And, and then the people from the monumental, uh, they say, this is not possible. And we are right to till one point in which we say, okay, Reich Museum need a, tab uh, a building with one degree of different temperature and one degree of, uh, if you don't accept that, we have to go outside of the city. We make a new building, perfect new modern building with this capacity. And what do you have with this building? It's going to be abandoned. Oh. And that was the reason they accept that we can modificate the uh, situation and that we can make in insulation that allow the, uh, the rights, like the collection of the rights, to be maintained uh, there. But I take your, your uh, question in another, in another direction. There will be possible to make another kind of intervention with minimum interventions and that we could maintain even for few people or for one week use. Okay, that would be very interesting. It would be very, if economically we can uh, we can support, or why not? Why not? I think even even maybe maybe the problem will be also that everybody accepts a certain dysfunctionality in the new building. Okay, that we can accept that that museum had not only one degree of uh, variability, or that you have to accept different situation that are not so so important. I, I think I, I I also could accept that the new uh, function had to deal with the reality of the building, and that you cannot optimize it all your uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. When they say, I say you, I, I mean the curator, I mean the user. The user also of the building had to accept that if, you want, if we want to ma maintain the, the historical building, we had to accept, uh, to accept the fu this functionality in the interior of the building. And that we cannot impose to this building the rule that we had for the new buildings. We so, have to so be more flexible. So, so to be clear, what ended up happening? You allowed more flexibility in the temperature, or you insulated? Uh, no, I think both seem, but I think that both seem. The, you insulated the, and the, got a little bit. You insulated, but not be so uh, strict. I uh, see. In different point, in different moment. I mean, sometimes also the user of the of the building, they want to see the building as you were doing one new building and you cannot get, uh, get in a old building, in a restored old building, the same perfect condition of functionality that you can make in a new, in a new building. That had to be accepted. I have also in the year problem with the syndicates in a transformation of a building into a new offices and they say that we are not uh, ready to accept any uh, modification of our condition of temperature because you are working or we are in a old building that the, the society have decided to maintain. And they say, no, we have our real and we are not uh, willing to accept any uh, reduction of the condition. And that was the uh, syndicates that doesn't want to accept. But 
the, the, the society wanted to maintain this building and everybody had to accept a certain degree of dysfunctionality. Interesting. Um, I, I, I'll, um, I love this idea of having to accept a certain degree of dysfunctionality because it reminds me of my family, so it, I think it's, it's really great. Maybe we can come back to that uh, in the q and I'll ask you one last question and then I'll open it up to, to all of you to, um, to, to ask some questions. Um, you mentioned at various junctions in your talk this notion of allowing the image of the building not altering, you mentioned not altering it, allowing it to remain, bringing it back, um, and then putting, introducing a new image. And so I wanted to ask you a little bit about that because um, oftentimes we think of the image of a building as the facade, the outside of the building. No, that's the thing that you know, typically there, there's lots of photographs of, let's say. But in your projects, that tends to not to be the image of the building, certainly the image that is circulated. So there, there, there is a, a bit of a turn to the interior. Um, even in the Basel project, which has quite an extraordinary facade that you've made, um, many of the images circulated, many of the way in which visually the building is communicated is through interior photographs. Um, the, and, and certainly in the case of the Rijksmuseum, uh, and I think increasingly so with the Peineta, which is now, it's the pitch, right? It's the interior that's in, in, that, in that roof, that third facade. So I wanted to ask you about, about ceilings. I guess it's my way of asking you about ceilings. Because um, it seems that ceilings are very important as a way to, to change the way that we engage with the historic building. Okay, first of all, I think, uh, thank you for the critics, because, <laughs> <laughs> for the critics, because, okay, it's like this. Like, uh, we see, we see the, the, our role like an like architect, like a, a hall in, in which everything is important. I, mean, I try to also to explain to you how important for us is also the construction and the, and the, and the structural, uh, the, the resistance of the, of the building. I mean, we work in every in every part, part of the of, in all the problems that an architect had to, to face, and I hope that this is that this is clear in our building. And that's why uh, you talk about exterior, interior, and now you talk about about ceiling. Okay, it is, it is clear when you are in an, in an interior, you have uh, let's say floor, four walls and one uh, city, and the city. But at the same time, most of the time it's beautiful when the ceiling is also the point where light is, is coming. You know? And uh, to me, there is a, a, an element that we have not talked today, that for me is very, very important in our architecture, that are the corridors. We had many, many, many corridors. To me, the, the corridor is uh, the, maybe the element in the in the architecture that uh, I like more. Mm -hmm. That's why maybe in Rijksmuseum, in this Korea we had we had uh, been able to transform with some elements the uh, characteristics of this Korea. But we have been doing Korea for 50 years, and we we, we were working in the Korea so so many times. And in the Korea there is no ceiling, but the ceiling is very theoretical because in the courtyard the ceiling is the emptiness. Mm -hmm. But at the same time it's very present, yes. That I can't say much more to think about, about, about ceiling. It, that, that those ceiling in the, uh, in the uh, sport space are also very important because they have this characteristic of the oculus that we are near to the um, Parthenon mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. uh, in, in this kind of, of uh, classical buildings in which right. you find the, 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 the stereo through a uh, central hall. Right. But I can say well, it's, no, but I think this is very interesting that you brought your work. I mean, uh, it's true, we didn't talk about courtyards, and many of your early projects were famous for their, photo, uh, for their, for their uh, courtyards. Yeah. 
and I'm, I'm thinking particularly the one that was like a kidney shaped yeah, that you yeah. did in Seville, which was extraordinary, and it was a function of the geometries that you were trying to negotiate. So it was wonderful to hear you describe those as a kind of poetics of the ceiling, you know, that I'd never really, you know, it's amazing result. But anyway, I'll, we'll maybe leave it at that for, uh, and um, let the audience ask questions if you have, um, if you have some. Uh, thank you for a wonderful lecture. Something really compelled me. Uh, when you were talking about the uh, Reich Museum and uh, you were describing the original entrances to the museum, you were talking about the architect as if you knew him. You said something like, yes, he wanted the entrance to be um, from, from this way and also from this way, you were talking about him as if you were in conversation with him, although, I mean, this is a very old building. So I was wondering, the question is, um, how much of the process of design is um, reading the intention of the original architect and how, how long does this conversation keep going? Um, for you, so... Uh, if I had uh, understood your question, is you are asking me till which point the, uh, the architect works with freedom and till which point, okay, I, I, I had to say that for me, this is a very important characteristic in the architecture in our work that we had to work with many, many, many intermediates and with many intermediation. I mean, we, we are no, never, we are never free to do whatever we want. Uh, we can do something and we had to, to be able to maintain an uh, initial idea, a main idea, even that you suffer a lot of uh, changing in your project, but you have to be conscious that an architect knows like a painter that only has the canvas in front of his and the painter and began to do to, 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 to that. He made whatever he want, or the writer also. They are very, very, very free. I think I, I don't want this freedom because it had to be terrible sometimes. <laughs> it's, better, <laughs> it's better to have something that say to you, oh, hey, you, you, okay, you had to work in that, in that way, but especially in architecture, you had to accept that uh, one world of architecture is the final result of many different uh, situations and uh, people and uh, economical reasons, social reasons. And the one who doesn't want that said that, that maybe it's better than go to another another matter because it's, in here you had to accept all this situation. And even with your own building, even with it, your own it, 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 it wasn't yours anymore in a way. What do you mean with your the, own uh, building? Stadium? Eh? The, the stadium? The stadium, the, the building that you designed. Yes, but when the Pineta, you are working in your own, in your own building, but then you had, you had a client, and the client is a football team that want people to be near the player, and there is, there is plenty of things, and there is no all the money that you want to have, and there is a constructed company that want to build as cheap as possible, and there is the, the city that want to give you the permission or not. And okay, I, I, can, I, can, I can say that it's really very uh, complex to do a, a work of architecture. I, I think that this is very, very similar to the cinema. If you think in the cinema is um, a, it's something that have a lot of similarity with our, our uh, work because there is a lot of people working, you need money to do the thing, you need people collaborating with you, there is photograph, there is plenty of people arriving there. Okay, and this is, is quite similar cinema and architecture. The other 
I, 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 don't, I don't like to use the word arts, but sometimes the other uh, ad, uh, activity maybe are more free than, than us. But with cinema, there is a lot of things that are similar in cinema and architecture. Another question? Thank you so much. What are the basic material and the acoustic panels that you're showing there, and how well did that actually uh, work in terms of getting rid of the echo, which is a big problem with a huge space like that? You, you mean in the racks? Right, right. Okay. And then the material is said in Spanish, top acoustic. I don't know how to say in, in English. I mean, it's a, it's a material made of wood, and at the, ten, at the same time have a lot of, of holes, but, and that's the material which, uh, in, with which is made any one of these vertical bar. But at the same time, the fact that they are bar does help from the acoustic point of view because every, every difficulty that you put to the sound made that the sound cannot uh, uh, go back. If you, the sound entering between all these bar and they, when they try to go again, to you, it cannot, it can't, uh, uh, can, can, it can go back. Uh, uh, at the same time, the same material is absorbent, uh, acoustic. Absorbs the, the sound. So, is there much echo, or is it fairly quiet inside? It's too dry to make the sound more dry. More dry. That means that less echo, less echo to absorb the the sound. Question in the back. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation, I really enjoy it. Um, I have uh, the two parts of the question, if possible. Um, I wonder uh, the economic uh, uh, impact that uh, drives uh, your projects in general and, and, and how uh, currently, uh, because of the digital uh, and all the technology that it, Architecture uh, has turned. Uh, I wonder if you if you can talk about that and how uh, how the process of of making these uh, changes of existing buildings uh, how's the preservation of this process in in relation to to nowadays digital tools. Could you could you clarify the question a little bit? Are, are, are you yeah, are you saying that um, are you talking about social media and how the the buildings are represented, uh, and how, and are you talking about the economic impact that that has on visitation no. or tickets? I mean, could you be a little more clear? And the, the 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 in the making of these buildings, the process of of construction, and the labor and 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 how. If you compare that to the digital uh, advances, uh, how well, I, I'm wondering about that balance between. You mean digital uh, building, like the digital in the building technology, like how yes, the like digital makes digital tools for design. Mm -hmm. I see. So, so did you use a lot of digital yes. technology in order to make these projects? I Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. And now in this moment, we are we are already working with the uh, bin system. We've passed from the cat to the to the bin, and we use uh, all the all the technology that uh, we need. And uh, but I suppose that this is something that already is is understood. But this is one of the other problems when I mentioned before the complexity of our work of architecture even in the interior of our office. Now, when, when I begin, I began to work in, in 71, not in 74. Oh. In 71, I, I began to have a, with 23 years, I have already my, my own office. And uh, okay, it was nothing, okay, paper, pencil, uh, that's all. And now every day we had a lot of computer, we have people working, 
we need to work with a lot of people. This is something that have changed a lot and that make us able to to work very quickly. The, at, at the same time, is 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 a complexity to the necessity to work with the different people. And I don't know what to say to you. I only in the last days or in the last months, I are uh, thinking about all this idea about the the new program, the the BIM program, that I am not. I, I would say, don't we don't we cannot forget about the representation that we had done for centuries about the architecture. This idea that we can with a plan and with section and with facade represent uh, with the facade represent an element that really have a three dimension. And the new program today doesn't accept this representation and they won't produce one file that is exactly the building in the three uh, dimension. And I said the other way to represent the building, the the the, the edrical system is a very clever discovery. I said that is very clever. And because it's very clever, it's difficult and to forget it about it and to go directly in the three-dimensional file that everybody today accepts that they have to go there. It's only a thinking. Well, I, I want to thank you for um, a, a fantastic lecture, and you gave us so much to think about. And um, I think Paul uh, would have been very pleased with, with the level of discourse that you presented tonight. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you.